everybody. I am so excited to have Cher Jones, who is the founder of Socially Active. She's also a B2B social media trainer, and she is a LinkedIn expert, and gosh, you, you're just a social media expert all the way around. Everybody say hi to Cher. Hey, everyone. <laughs> awesome, awesome. So, Cher, you, you, you're a B2B social media trainer. Tell everybody what that is. Okay, so we're in this time and space right now where as we do pe business with people, whether you're in sales or whether you're working internally, we look people up and we're leveraging things like LinkedIn would be like the biggest one that we're leveraging to check people out, whether they're going to come on your team, whether they're going to be selling something, whether you are working on an opportunity or a partnership or whatever. There's a point now where we need to leverage social media in the business to business space. Mm -hmm. So I teach people how to develop their brand so that when people, when I look you up, I know what you do now. You don't look as good as the last job you applied for with a new title on it, right? Mm -hmm. So I know how you can help me. And then as well, I teach you how to be social for business because there's a whole nuance around it, around networking, network building and all that stuff. And of course, there's that content piece where there's so many business to business professionals, people working in corporate, people selling in corporate who simply don't know how to create content that actually matters. Mm -hmm. So that's what I do. Well, that's good. And then I also saw that you work with individuals on personal branding. You want to talk yes. about that? Yes. So it's in and around the same space. It is about owning your awesome online. So when I look you up, I know how you can help me, but I also know what you've done to get me to that point mm -hmm. that I trust you that you can help me. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. You know, most people think about social media reaching consumers. So it's really special that you have found this niche in B2B. Because often, and wrongly so, you probably would agree, people don't see how social media can value, be a value in the B2B space. Exactly. And then all of a sudden, it's like, wait. We do business with people, not logos, right. right? So all of a sudden, when you do the math on that, you're like, of course you need a B2B social media trader. And I'm glad, <laughs> I'm glad that the space is there for me to play with. And it's just phenomenal when you can see the results of people putting effort into how they show up online. Awesome, awesome. Well, you know what? I think it's time to have a culture soup moment. What do you think? Oh, absolutely. Awesome. I would be sipping to it right now. Let's go. <laughs> awesome. Okay, so... I have noticed how LinkedIn has become like the new new, like everybody is excited about LinkedIn. Even mm -hmm. people who aren't really socially active are beginning to think, oh, well, I should at least dust off my profile and let me get that headline just right because mm -hmm. they understand that they need to be found. What have you found about the popularity of LinkedIn? Is it because it is mirroring Facebook in some ways with the updates and the reactions? I would say yes, that definitely has something to do with it. So for, over the last two and a half years, what we've seen now from a LinkedIn culture perspective is they've really done a lot of updates to the system to make it more social. Mm -hmm. Way back in the days, if you received a, a LinkedIn message, it felt like a an email. Yeah. And now the first change that they actually made was that direct messaging. So it became conversational, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? Then they started adding video and they started really pushing people to the news feed. And then, like you said, the reactions now live video, like this is a, a, an emerging platform. And then they're also doing a lot of work in the campus area. So they're trying to bring young people on LinkedIn. Okay. And so you're seeing this really cool interaction of culture, like uh, from an age perspective yeah. and also gender and, and, and ethnicity. And you're seeing all that and you're seeing it in a little bit more of a safe space than you would, let's say YouTube or even Instagram right. or Facebook, because you know that when you go on there for the most part, it's for business. Mm -hmm. And when you're doing stuff that is outside of that it's kind of looked upon like really why are you doing this this is not Facebook or right. Instagram or whatever right and you know what this is how I came across you and you're one of the rare friends that I've met on the internet and um, I'm scrolling through and there you are you do video content you do extraordinary video content Thank you. <laughs> and yeah you're talking about LinkedIn and you really dropped some gems that day that got my attention you talked about the algorithm you mm -hmm. talked about um, being your own influencer and mm -hmm. tapping into that. You want to tell uh, the folks a bit about the tips that you shared? Because they were great. Okay, so one of the biggest things that what 
however you're leveraging social media for business. Because right now, I think um, LinkedIn and um, Instagram are the one-two punch when mm-hmm. leveraging it for your personal brand, for business and for pleasure and mixing that in together. Um, the one thing that you need to do no matter what is understand how the algorithm works. Mm-hmm. Because if you do not understand that, you will be wasting your time. So it's really important to do that. So what I suggest a lot of people do is really get into studying the algorithm. And that could be just understanding a a few simple tips, like understanding that it is relationship first, because if you are just posting and ghosting, Mm -hmm. right? So you post and ghost, you're out Mm -hmm. and you're not there to interact with people who are actually liking or viewing your post. The algorithm will start to read that and then will no longer favor what you put out there. Wow. So all of a sudden you become devalued. Mm -hmm. So it really becomes this sort of back and forth as you prove to the network that you are a community member, you will all of a sudden achieve a lot more reach. And the whole reason why that we're doing this is to influence and impact our network and be strategic about how we grow. So if you are leveraging, especially the relationships, Mm -hmm. leveraging the algorithm, so getting out there, being active, not just on your own posts, but on other people's posts, getting on the DM, liking stuff, being a part of the network, Mm -hmm. you will see that all of a sudden your network, your reach and the opportunities just seem to come to you. Right. You know what? This is really good news for people who are saying, you know what? I don't like to create my own content. Where do I ever have time to write something or right. gee I don't have a podcast and I don't have time to do a podcast right. I tell people all the time there's a way to do that and you just describe that and it sounds like the algorithm is friendly to it and that means that if Cher posts something that I think is great it makes mm-hmm. sense to give it a thumbs up a heart mm-hmm. a clap or some kind of reaction because the mm-hmm. algorithm likes that right one hundred percent. And then in addition to that, what people don't recognize is you are con- you are creating content through your comments. You're mm-hmm. creating a mm-hmm. post, just a, a, a micro post. Yes. Right. And you're giving people the opportunity to engage with you through other people's content. So, no, you don't have to be a creator. Yes. Creating content can definitely accelerate your path right. to to being noticed if you're creating good content. Because right. that's the other thing is there's a lot of crap out there yes. in order for you to rise up. It has to be something worth watching, reading or looking at. Right. Absolutely. So. What you need to do then is just simply be present Mm -hmm. and then you will start to notice and how you notice your wins is that when you're present and all of a sudden every time that you like something, you can see that your network who would never have known that person before, all of a sudden they're liking that. It's because they saw it through you or if you comment on something and then you have a lot of likes on your comment, that's when you know you've done good. Right. And you know what? I had an aha moment just the other day when I posted a wanted post, if you will, because I'm Mm -hmm. looking for a virtual assistant. Mm -hmm. And the post is probably just about two lines. There's Mm -hmm. no photo. There's no rich podcast content, nothing like that. And Mm -hmm. then suddenly I started to see all the VA and VA, um, you know, agencies show up. Of course, I made Mm -hmm. sure that I hashtagged it. I I was going to say, hashtags are a big thing. thing. They were all third removed yes. in my network yes. and I was yes. like you know what that's powerful because even though my first and second layer you know friends did not respond that third mm-hmm. layer saw it 100 percent. and what's interesting again going back to your culture soup moment mm-hmm. as far as how LinkedIn has adopted the the way that we use the internet from a social media mm-hmm. perspective mm-hmm. and made it more of a social platform as opposed to the original resume job hunting platform is they've added hashtags they added it in at one point then they took it away then they added it back about a year ago and they are starting to push it that you can follow hashtags the same way you can mm-hmm. on Instagram Right. And that's really important because that is another way for you to increase your reach. So, again, understanding the algorithm, understanding how social works. And the good news is for a lot of people are like, oh, my gosh. So is it different from Instagram? Is it different from Facebook? What we're seeing right now? And there's a video I saw from a, a Internet expert. Um, his name is Neil Patel and he creates some great yeah. content. And what he said on one of his trending videos for like the trends that we're seeing in 2019 is the algorithm habits and and user habits are com- they're converging so all the social media networks for the most part are kind of taking in the mm-hmm. same behavioral rhythms of course they're culturally different on each network but these these 
um, responsibility, or sorry, these relationship lines are really what's driving your visibility. So getting in there in the DMs, getting in the comments, liking stuff, leveraging hashtags, it all works right. cross platform. Absolutely. So I want to get back to two things before we move on. You mm-hmm. mentioned get to know the algorithm. Now, for those of us who have been in integrated marketing for some of the biggest brands out there, some of these tips and tricks have been told to us by account members at LinkedIn, at Facebook, wherever. Mm-hmm. But you mentioned that you can study them. So yeah. how does just someone who has nothing to do with marketing study an algorithm and figure out what's happening? Okay, so there's two ways. Mm-hmm. One, Google.com. Okay. <laughs> there you go. And how does the LinkedIn algorithm work? Yeah. Um, I create content on that as well. Like people, it, there's a lot of content mm-hmm. out there. So tips for if if you want to step back and not look for algorithm, if you look tips for being more visible on LinkedIn, mm-hmm. you search mm-hmm. up that thing, you will see that. And it's all it's because these tips are based off of the algorithm, mm-hmm. right? So. Um, what you can also do as well is start to watch what's working. Yeah. All of the networks supply enough data for you to start seeing what's happening in your network. Mm-hmm. And when you post something, um, uh, even timing matters, for mm-hmm. example, because the another thing to know about the algorithm and understand is that the algorithm, when you post something, what it does first is it tests within your network. So it will test in, in a few, like with a few people, And if your post is not engaged with within, let's say, anywhere between 30 and 45 minutes, if there's no engagement, that post is dead. It Mm -hmm. will not pushed out further so you also have to keep in mind your like your timing mm-hmm. what is network on and there there are a lot of different ways that you can find this information out um but you can also use just intuitive timing so you know that people wake up first thing in the morning right, right? they're on their way to the gym or they're commuting or whatever and they just wake up they look at their phones and that's a great time to post um, thinking about the workday. So break time, lunch time, mm-hmm. you know, LinkedIn is kind of, it's not a dead zone, but it is a dead zone at night. Oh yeah. Well, and the, on the, Friday the, evenings for sure. Friday, It's a wrap, right? Sunday and, night is pretty hot. Hopping. And also Saturday morning. So that's yes. a little more that goes into the counterintuitive timing theory because people are just chilling with their coffee Mm -hmm. Saturday morning Sunday night just chilling and those are really good places and that's a great time to actually engage in other people's content right right? because you'll get that visibility you'll get the opportunity to have those conversations because people have time so Monday mornings actually really suck as well because you come to work and you're trying to do your thing Tuesday Wednesday Thursday those are the prime time days Tuesday being the best day um and And so those three days are the best days and keeping in mind that break time, um, optimum time schedule. Right. Well, that's awesome tips like that. Those are gems. Like I said, y'all just scrolling through and she's dropping gems. Let me ask you this, because there was something else in that video that I thought was just so I hadn't heard it before. There is a tool that LinkedIn has that measures your influence. Correct. Okay. so everybody's talking about personal brands and all of this good stuff. I like to say that you own your social capital. You own your social real estate. And mm-hmm. I ask people, what are you going to do about it? Mm-hmm. And this is one of those ways to measure what yes. you're doing and how effective it is. You want to talk about it? Yes, I do. So it's called the SSI score, also known as the Social Selling Index Score. And it takes a look at four different categories. So how you're branding yourself, how you're building your network, your activity, and also what groups and whatnot that Mm -hmm. you're belonging to and it scores it and it ranks it based off of just just your activity and you will notice that with an increase of activity you'll you'll get to a point which is pretty much your your kind of like your baseline score so that you can start to see the more time you spend on the network is the higher your score will go do you want a super high score goes up to 100 by the way do you want a super super high score probably not because that probably means you're not working you're spending all day on that day (laughs) right but any score, quite frankly, over around 60 or so mm-hmm. is, is, is a it's really good, good score. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Even 45, do not fret. That's still a good score. Mm-hmm. And then you can look at where you need to boost. And oftentimes it's in the personal brand space. So that's in your profile and making sure you bring it up to all-star mm-hmm. ranking. Mm-hmm. 
Um, another way that you can also start to evaluate. So that will give you a score. What's really cool about that before I give you the other options yeah. is um, you, you can look at how you rank in your own network. So you can see what your score is versus the rest of your network. Mm -hmm. So meaning your first degree connections, right? You can also look at your comparison between you and the rest of your industry. So whatever industry setting you have on, it will compare that this is your score and this is how the rest of your industry industry is doing because that can also benchmark views to say okay I'm still better than everybody else yeah. not to say that's where you want to stop but it gives you that that feeling and that vibe or it, it kind of kicks you in the butt um so there were two other areas that mm -hmm. I always tell people to watch for so profile views mm -hmm. so as your activity increases you should see a direct correlation to your profile views mm -hmm. increasing mm -hmm. and then also watch your number of connections is mm -hmm. it growing there should be a direct correlation between your activity growth and then your network growth as well. Awesome. Awesome. So what do you say to people who are like, yeah, that word influence and influencer, that's for those folks out there that are getting, you know, paid by brands. That's not me. I'm just in business. You know, I'm just yeah. out there trying to make a living and I'm, I'm not even looking for a job. What do you have to say to them about their influence? Well, I, I would say that there's a new category of influence that they need to recognize, and it's the corporate influencer. And recognizing that within, whether it's in within your own community at work, whether it's in your in industry community, whether it's in as an entrepreneur, you're trying to get out there, you can develop influence within the corporate space. Mm -hmm. So what happens is like you want to develop that influence so that when you walk into a meeting, people already know what you bring to the table, right. right? Why Why should you leave that to chance? Why should you leave that to the one girl in the back of the room who I didn't know who you were? Mm -hmm. And meanwhile, you bring all this amazing talent and, and skill and opportunity. But if you create a powerful profile that tells people exactly what you do and how you can help them, and then you make sure you get it in front of those people before you get to the meeting. So that could simply mean right. you're sending connection requests. Hey, looking forward to next Tuesday's meeting. In the meantime, let's connect here on LinkedIn mm -hmm. or send them a DM because you're already connected looking forward to next week's meeting I um, can't wait to see you there whatever something that you're just putting your profile in front of them and believe me they will look oh, yeah. and then already <laughs> if you've positioned yourself so if you if you're really taking that power positioning power profile positioning standpoint where again you are starting to attract the work you want because you're putting it out there what you're good at and then people will already think how can I use you because at the end of the day it's credibility that we trust. So we build that trust. Of, oh, I know that she can do that for me. Right. I know he can do that for me. So you might as well start attracting what you want by putting it out there. I love your use of the word attract because I write about what I call unnetworking. And that's for people who don't like to be all out there, you know, being aggressive, <laughs> going to networking. And a lot of it has to do with it. And tell me if you agree or not, how, what people know about you, your track <laughs> record, your performance, <laughs> and yes, what you're sharing on social media. And I have a great example of that. Yesterday I was in a meeting. I won't tell which sports team it was, but I'm mm -hmm. sitting there and the CEO turns to me and says, you know what? I've been following you on social media. Yes. And I thought it was going to be a PR meeting because that's what she knew me for. But mm -hmm. it turned into an executive coaching and business coaching deal, which is exactly what I wanted her to do. <laughs> but it was all because she's like, I've been following, I get it, and I want it. Mm -hmm. And that's because you've developed your influence over time through building a credible presence. And that's what we have to recognize as well, is yes, we do business with people we, we like, but if they're not credible, even if we like them, you could like somebody and if you don't feel that they can totally. do the job, yeah. you're not going to hire them. And that's where that likability piece gets mm -hmm. in the way. So there's this really awesome sales um, trainer and expert called Keenan. And he's also on, on LinkedIn and he constantly says it's not, yes, it's likability is important, but credibility is even more important. And mm -hmm. I align with, with his philosophy there because at the end of the day, you're going to hire the person who can do the job the best because it looks good on you when it gets done. Totally. And if totally. you like and the person's credible, that's, that's like a, a win, win. Yeah. Like you, it's totally. over, like game over, yeah. right? And that's what you've done is that you've put yourself out there. People see you. You never know when, as you're putting your content out there and as people get, begin to build that trust, as they see how you interact with right. other people, you're building up your trust bank. You're building up your credibility bank. So when that person now contacts you, it's just a matter of, 
maybe budget Mm -hmm. and and timing right so and you're literally having a closing conversation rather than having to sell yourself totally what's your opinion on um content that may not have high engagement but it's very good content Mm -hmm. is it important to keep it out there so that people can have a rich you know thorough search of what you're capable of because i find Mm -hmm. that i have a lot of lurkers And, you know, there was one piece of content that didn't perform very well, but I got two DMs that were leads, like serious leads. A hundred percent. So I did a video um, about your friends and the fact that you can't expect your friends to support your content just because you put it out there. Right. And it's like the amount of people who said, you know, I see a lot of content. I just don't comment on it because there's so many people who they're they're fearful because like maybe they're at work and they don't want people to think they're on linkedin Mm -hmm. watching stuff Mm -hmm. you know what i mean but they are seeing people they're more watchers like that people that fraction of people who actually engage in your content Mm -hmm. is just a simple fraction of who has seen it yeah so just don't expect everybody to be clicking like on everything and you have to remember these days if you comment on something you, that could be a whole train of notifications that you're now bringing into totally. your into your phone because everybody's engaging on it so there are people there's different social habits yeah. but if it's good content do not worry about it. if it's crappy content don't like that's the worst thing i think people do like they're just flooding the network mm-hmm. to be visible and it's not valuable then all of a sudden you lose on the trust barometer you start going down but if you're putting good content you'll touch who you're supposed to touch get out of the vanity metrics although it, it's easier said than done mm-hmm. because it, it is a psychological thing but what's interesting what's happening right now so i'm canadian as, as we were talking about yeah. before the the show started and um in canada instagram is testing right now the 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 likes you cannot see the number of people who like to post oh right so you're just seeing that oh. let's say you liked it plus you know they just say that it just says like one person liked it and others literally instead of and others and it's interesting as i've talked to people how they feel about it and it's like a relief it's like even the people who are producing content for a living they feel like the stress is off because that layer of judgment Mm -hmm. is removed that visible layer of judgment so what it's it'll be interesting to see how this affects the other networks as we're talking that culture you know there's a whole other culture culture because we all know that those thumbs up and reactions give us dopamine hits exactly as much as we may not want to admit that we are a little bit addicted that's a yeah. great way to break the addiction. Well, I mean, you as the poster still get to see how many people okay. engage, but it takes the oh. pressure off the rest of the world is not seeing that. Gotcha. So, oh, that's okay. I like that. I, I, I really appreciate it. Yeah. Okay. Well, Cher, now that we've heard all of your great wisdom, we need to know who you are. <laughs> what is your story? You're all the way in Toronto. You've been there all your life, it sounds. Yeah. 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 And so... What brought you to the B2B social media space? Okay, so um, my energy and vibe makes me appear a lot younger than I am, <laughs> but I have twenty, almost 20 years of experience mm-hmm. in um, journalism, marketing, and then PR, and then finally social media. So I'll backtrack it a little bit. I actually, it's funny you brought up an NBA team. I used to work for the Raptors. That was one of my first jobs. Oh, wow. I worked in, yeah, I worked in broadcasting for about five years with Raptors Television, NBA TV here in Canada. And then I moved into marketing and communications and then PR for the city of Toronto. So corporate comms, PR. And then in 2013, again, dating myself, 2013, I took the leap and went full-time social media entrepreneurship and sort of as I moved around, it's just like figuring out exactly mm-hmm. where the, where the energy and the market is going and trying to get ahead of it. I've always stayed in the personal branding space without even knowing it was that way right. back then. But I definitely would call myself a pioneer as far as working in this space as a professional social media trainer, speaker, mm-hmm. and, and whatnot for quite since actually since 2011. So awesome. it's, it's been a fun ride because yeah. <laughs> just watch friends. So that's awesome. So you have corporate clients and then you have individual clients. How does it work? 
So with my corporate t- clients, what I'm helping them do, especially the need is so great now because we recognize that people are looking you up before they take your call, before they answer your email, before they're taking your, uh, you know, having a sales meeting with you, whatever. They're looking you up. And then on top of that, it's that maintain- maintenance of a relationship for those who have their own book of business or they're actually selling and actively gathering leads. They're recognizing that, as we talked about earlier, people do business with people, yeah. right? So, and even from a talent attraction perspective, they want to know who works at that company. Why? do I want to align myself with that company now? It's a big thing. So with teams, what I do is I help um, the professionals on the team, depending on what they do, I help them brand themselves for the job that they're in now. Mm -hmm. So what they do, and then I help them considering what they have to accomplish in their role. How do we integrate being social as a part of that? So I have a full team training program. And then for those who want to create content or co-create with marketing, I also have content workshops on that as well. Oh, I love it. That's so Uh, needed right now. So mm. many people are trying to figure it out. Some of the older companies are just coming around to the idea that their employees need to be active. Of course, the whole conversation about employee advocacy is a big one. And actually balancing what they do for the business with their personal brands. Yes. But then also understanding that you bring shine to whatever exactly. company you work for, even if you're not spouting company messages. What do you have to say about that? A hundred percent. And that's what we're recognizing now is that um, – is that there's so many, especially more in the conservative space, which is like my sweet spot. I love, you know, the financial space, the engineers, the consulting mm-hmm. firms and all that kind of stuff. Accountants, they're all recognizing, oh, my gosh, we need to do. Too. And they they don't know what to write. There's been always a don't do that on social media. So they have this fear of I can't do anything. Right. But what I've developed my training programs is here's what you can do. Right. And it's certified. You're good to go. Right. And then also. There's also that fear of not knowing how to write about yourself mm. in a service-based, right. um, in a service-based approach. So we, I start first with their their profile and their presence, mm-hmm. and then we go on to how do you be social in a business context, mm-hmm. and then we go on to content. So it's always bit by bit by bit, and it's not you can't learn social media in a half-day workshop. Like it right. takes time, and it's about building on the skills. Right, that's great stuff. So. We're going to meet each other finally face-to-face in Atlanta. Yay! Exactly. Exactly. (laughs) So it's the Lead 360 Combine, and we're both Mm -hmm. faculty members, which is really cool. Tell us what you're going to be talking about. Okay, so um, I have a whole session on power profile positioning, and it's basically I'm going to unlock the keys to the car of driving away in an awesome profile and how you have to position yourself today. Mm -hmm. So that you don't look like a job seeker and you actually look like you're there to do business. So I'm going to unlock the keys on how to write it, how to position yourself, what is most important. And I mean, I don't really work with job seekers. So I work with people who are leveraging their profile to do their job, to do business, Mm -hmm. to create opportunities. So I pretty much I work on the top half of the profile, mm-hmm. the half that people actually read, yeah. except the HR people go into the, right. <laughs> the red <laughs> section. And it's really about that section. So how do you become that click magnet? Mm-hmm. How are you positioning yourself for business? So that's my session as well. I'm doing also uh, a, a talk as well, like a win talk. So I'm excited about that. So that. Yeah. You know what? It's so important that people understand that you can be very happy in your job, not looking and mm-hmm. still have an up-to-date profile that is a click magnet, like you said. And it's important, yes. not just for external eyes, but for internal eyes. Internal. Can you, can you explain yes. that? Because I don't think people get that. How Absolutely. it can position you well inside your and own it- company. Absolutely. And I've been hired to do just that, teaching people how to network within their organization. Mm-hmm. Because some people, some organizations, there's absolutely any job, any career path you want to go through, yeah. you can stay in that one organization. Totally. As well, what people are recognizing that is if you want to get tapped to be on a new team, a new project, and this is within, yeah. this is within, you can leverage your presence and build your corporate influence mm-hmm. so that when you are connecting, when you're going to those company events, for example, and you meet the president, you mm-hmm. meet the d- different directors or whoever it is you want to meet, and especially in other silos. And I know you're all about breaking down silos. Yes. <laughs> so one of those things is, is, is that if you create a profile that 
clearly communicates what you do and how you serve. Now you don't even have to talk about yourself so much. You need to put that profile in front of those people later on Mm -hmm. as well. You think that when they're talking about when they're talking about who should be on what project, they're not looking you up. Oh, you should talk to so-and-so. They can do this, this and that because you fed them the language to talk about you. So your profile's job is to refer you opportunities, whether it's external or internal. That's so important. So how do you... um work with the mindsets that think only high up officers, SVPs and above should be doing this activity. And oh, by the way, if middle management is doing it, they should be suspect because are they job hunting? How do you deal with that mindset? Because it's out there. I think because of my approach. Mm -hmm. So I'm working on marketing the person you are now in the job you are right now. Mm -hmm. How can you leverage it better? How can you build your network? It changes the perception because when I look you, you can tell a job, I can tell a job seeker profile a mile away. When your profile talks about where you are and also you can plant seeds of what you love to do mm-hmm. so that you can start attracting those other opportunities. But it takes on a different light mm-hmm. because I see what it is you're doing. So I see you in your role. And then if you are socially active, then all of a sudden it doesn't look like a job seeking role. If you're networking, if you're building internal alliances so you can get things done faster. Mm-hmm. So you meet people on the QA team, you meet people people on the development team you meet people in corporate comms now when you need to make a a a quick call you have that network Mm -hmm. you can dm them on linkedin real fast and get a faster answer than sending them an email yeah boy Mm -hmm. lots of good nuggets for people to think about and share i am looking so forward to meeting you i feel like we're fast friends just scrolling through linkedin and (laughs) hey y'all there it is right there you actually make real connections on these Mm -hmm. platforms Mm -hmm. don't discount them right Absolutely. It's really, it's game changing. I've been able to go to Dubai. I've been able to go to Singapore. I've been able to go to the States. I go like all over Canada because of the opportunities that have come to me as a result of either my presence, my, like my activity, my Mm -hmm. profile. And it's amazing. And I always can have a direct correlation between my activity levels. Cause like everybody else is going to go up and down depending on how busy you are with the opportunities that come to me because credibility, plus visibility equals opportunity and so that's what people need to work on totally so you know i talk about all the time creating those opportunities Mm -hmm. when you own your own career your own brand and your journey and this is exactly Mm -hmm. what we're talking about those opportunities come to you because you are what attractive so you know what before we go we got to shout out linkedin because i have a lot of people inside linkedin that that actually listen Y'all help share with her profile. Please, please. 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 So let me tell them. I am having problems uploading videos. And uh, my videos really do serve the LinkedIn community. They They teach people how to. We're here, right? (laughs) Exactly. I don't pitch. I don't have to do anything. I just put the information out there. And so right now. Now, every time I upload a video, it disappears five minutes later. There's a te- technical glitch on some of the accounts, my account included. Mm-hmm. So, and it's been three months, guys, three months that I've been back and forth with tech support and no help as of yet. So okay. hopefully my LinkedIn friends, you want to yes. like yes, along. Yes, please, please help my friend share because she does <laughs> great content. And that's the whole reason why she's here. Okay. So where do we find you online, Cher? Okay, so I'm it's Cher Jones, so ITS Cher Jones, pretty much everywhere. So Instagram, LinkedIn, you can find me. Um, you can also, I have a social media training company, so sociallyactivetraining.com. And if you li- literally Google Cher Jones Toronto, I'll be all over the place. Good. <laughs> Awesome. And and yes. my YouTube channel, since you can't see my videos on LinkedIn, you, you can find me if you just uh, Google Cher Jones, I should come up. Awesome. Well, Cher, it's been a pleasure. Thank you Thank for coming you. on the Culture Soup Podcast. And if there's the ever anything I that ever we had. can do for you, yay, let us know. And we'll, you know what? I think I want you back because I have a new episode on Tuesdays called The Coaching Corner. And okay. one day we need to dedicate it to being socially active. What do you think about that? Uh, it's a done deal. <laughs> awesome. Thanks so much, Cher. Thanks so much for having me. All right. The Culture Soup Podcast is a production of No Silos Communication.